Good morning, everyone. Uh, you're all very welcome to our weekly um, preview for the week ahead. So, of course, yesterday we did have Halloween, really not much happening in terms of the price action um, to begin the week, of course, with many people celebrating the festivities. Um, of course, for those who aren't following me that closely, the clocks have gone back in the UK over the weekend as well. So US session will begin this week, 1.30 p.m. and will close approximately 8 p.m. as well. So you'll see the data this week flowing a week or an hour earlier, should I say. So for example, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, FOMC will begin at 6 p.m. Um, rather than the usual um, 7 p.m. slot. So very much, I suppose, watching the price action um, all eyes on the price action this week, because, of course, as we know, we have the next Federal Reserve interest rate meeting. So, of course, the big discussion point over the last two, three weeks has been this idea of a Fed pivot, uh, quote unquote. And of course, we've seen the stock markets recover. Now, of course, the trending price action has been very, very clear. We had that manipulated move off the back of the CPI just two and a half weeks ago. And since then, we've seen the grind higher steadily. We've mentioned it a few times in our videos over the last couple of weeks or so. And markets are still obviously churning higher to that degree. Now, if we look at the week, just kind of forecasting a little bit on, on terms of the data yesterday uh, and, of course, this morning or overnight, we've had quite a few bits to consider. So, of course, first on our list is the European growth dynamics. So yesterday was all about um, GDP in Europe in that broader zone. Of course, we did have Chinese uh, non-manufacturing PMIs. So structurally speaking, if you start off with the Chinese PMIs below that 50 pivotal level so this was the the threshold that market participants were looking for pmis under 50 negative of course that is now um a recessionary indicator so that is an, a one of i suppose three or four different recessionary indicators that can be used when you see pmis under 50 that is a, a contractionary economy if it's a contractionary economy that is obviously it leading towards i suppose that recession mandate or the idea of a recession now of course yesterday morning we did also have gdp figures coming out in the broader euro so we had portugal we had italy uh, and we had um the, the broader eurozone as well the broader europe eurozone gdp for the year on year is now at 2.1 percent so it was projected to be 4.1 percent it is now coming in at 2.1 percent okay so as a result all of these separate individual nations in europe germany france belgium spain etc will all have a much revised lower, broader GDP for the rest of the year and, of course, into 2023 as well, okay? um. So last night then, if we gather kind of into last night, into Asian session this morning, we did have the RBA interest rate decision. So they have upped their rates. Instead of going by 25 basis points, they have gone to... Uh, sorry, instead of going by 50 basis points, they have upped their... Um, interest rates by less than ex obviously as expected and markets have obviously to factor that in so the australian uh, rba reserve bank of australia is now pivoting uh, because of the uh, recessionary uh, i suppose visuals or optics that they are starting to see within the underlying data within australia so of course now will that mean that all of these other central banks now we saw canada do so just a week and a half ago canada was expected to go by 75 basis points they went by 50 okay now, the ECB at this moment in time, last week, they upped their interest rates by 75 basis points to bring it to 2%. So the ECB is obviously still playing catch-up, okay? Bank of England is also still playing catch-up. So you would expect both of those to continue with their current cycle anyway for at least the next kind of three to six months and, of course, then assess broadly beyond that, okay? Um, I would be looking at that kind of into the early parts of 2023. Now, I suppose the big one, as we know tomorrow, is the Federal Open Market Committee which is the US uh, Fed. And of course, we are looking for 75 basis points. Now, of course, as we have alluded to, we've shared some very, very useful information in our institutional section in the Discord. Um, and we've alluded to the fact that uh, many are now looking at this idea of a Fed pivot, okay? So whether that comes now, which we don't expect it to do so, whether it's more towards the end of the year, kind of seeing that continued hike into the end of the year, seeing a slowdown, broadly speaking, and then of course, being a little bit more, I suppose, net neutral, into i suppose q1 and q2 of 2023 okay um so from an optics perspective from a news perspective that's kind of where we are in terms of the fundamental underlying fundamentals within the markets now of course this afternoon we do have manufacturing pmis we do have ism pmis and of course tonight in new zealand we do have unemployment rate out of new zealand so we do have rbnz governor or um speaking we do have macklem speaking tonight we do have rogers speaking tonight so this week you're going to see a lot more central bank speakers okay obviously last night during the night we had 
um, the RBA interest rate decision. We also had Governor Lowe speaking and giving his updates on what he's seen within the state of Australia. So it is important to kind of keep an eye on these events because they will move some of the FX markets, particularly if, if you're not trading the Asia session, but you are, I suppose, maybe kind of proactively interested in it, then it will move markets overnight um, for, for those who obviously trade during that time slot as well. Okay, now, as I said, tomorrow, we will be kind of back tomorrow looking at the Fed in detail, but all eyes will be on the federal interest rate meeting tomorrow. And of course, as I said, we will be doing a preview video tomorrow afternoon ahead of, of the Fed meeting tomorrow evening as well. All right. So that's kind of a current update where we are within the, the fundamentals of the markets. And of course, now let's take a deep dive into the price action. So of course, with the price action this week, with that kind of continued idea of a pivot, we're seeing risk orientation to the upside. So we're still seeing the indices continue kind of churning higher, gradually making new highs in this in this kind of cycle of price action. We are seeing dollar weakness still continue to play out. So last week we talked about this area here around 3.95% on the yields. We are revisiting that level. So this level will be kind of key today to see, does this area hold up in the 10 year yield? Because if it doesn't, you'll obviously look for more weakness in uh, risk safety assets. What we mean by risk safety assets would mean the dollar and the treasuries okay now similarly if we go across to the dxy you can kind of see that playing out very very clearly and um, we had that sell-off into the early parts of october we had that pullback and then of course over the last week or so new lows again have been made on the dxy so short term new lows have been made because we've broken through the structured low from the beginning of october we had that flag back into the end of last week very very early parts of yesterday and obviously yesterday evening and we've seen the dollar falter again so we didn't quite get to this kind of 111 80 12 112 level on the dxy um which was a level i was actually looking for myself personally however markets are now kind of churning lower again so it'll be interesting to see do we get kind of any sort of manipulation or hunt into this liquidity area and of course does this kind of bear flag uh pullback continue to develop of course into the fomc tomorrow and of course into the nfp which we'll obviously be looking at on friday as well all right now with the fx markets of course first things first if we look at the higher time frames to begin you can kind of see how the euro has had obviously that run up into the end of october and of course over the last week or so we've seen uh, the dollar uh, obviously come back into this 98, 99 level. Now, structurally speaking, if you're looking at the broader trend, you can see very, very clearly we've got highs, pullbacks. We had the CPI move. Of course, we had the manipulation. Uh, we've got that double tap of this 97 level and markets has continued pumping all the way back up into this 101 level. So would it be conceivable to see euro dollar again if that dollar continues, if that dollar weakness dynamic continues to play out, we should be looking at euro dollar kind of creeping back into that parity level once again and extending back into test these local highs at 101. But of course, that's on the proviso that dollar weakness sustains into tomorrow because we know how quickly the sentiment can change. We know how quickly the fundamentals can move the markets as well from a um a broader perspective, I suppose the broader market participant perspective. So it's important to be aware of that dynamic as well. But even on the short term perspective, you can kind of see how that dollar weakness is flagging back up into this 99, 96 level. Um, so from that perspective, we're keeping an eye on the price action around this region to see how does the market dynamic develop, okay? Um, we have technically broken structure here. You would see that as well as kind of a, a short-term structure break. You can kind of see it here. Um, a little bit of a hang around into last week, of course, into month end yesterday. We obviously sold off um, into obviously the close yesterday now of course since then markets has pulled back this morning okay late last night into the asia session markets has pulled back again weaker dollar and we're back into this kind of 99.50 99.60 level so worth keeping an eye to see does this level hold if it does hold um and, and obviously breaks through then we're looking at a pinpoint move probably back into these highs up here according and of course that is something that we obviously have to be looking at as well in the broader sense so with that as well cable um, so uh, again, cable dynamic, um, higher time frame structure analysis, very, very clear, uh, robust recovery after that collapse, the flash crash in September, uh, higher highs, higher lows still continue to play it. So you have higher highs, higher lows, you have a little bit of accumulation into month end, beginning of October, middle of October. And then of course, into the month end of October markets continues to try and churn higher. And in fact, that's what we've done. Now, when we look at the short term movements on cable, again, structurally speaking, it has creeped up all the way into this 115 level again. Now, when I look at structure on the one hour time frame, we can see this short term top playing here. So we've got initial impulse. We've um, created kind of a pullback. We've tried to break higher. You can see how we've obviously closed stronger into Friday's close. Monday, we've sold off. Tuesday, we're flagging back up into this level. Now, I've got two levels of interest here. We've got this one hour 
um, order block, short term order block area here at 115.45. But we also have the, um, I suppose, the initial impulse where it originated from is that 115.90 level. Now, I would rather see the price action get back into 115.90. But however, just being kind of rational to see how does the price action develop around these areas today and uh, into obviously Wednesday as well. Now, of course, on, on the four hour chart, you can kind of see how we've got that kind of top formation. We come back and flag back up to reject the, the order blocks. We break the structure then finally, and we're flagging back up again. So this region here is worth uh, watching, worth keeping an eye to see, do we see this bear continue, continuation continue to develop? Or is this another short term pullback ultimately for the markets to try and engulf this and continue progressing higher? And I suppose that's going to be the catalyst tomorrow at the FOMC. So the, the market movement this week will probably be the catalyst off the FOMC. But we can use the price action to start getting some clues in terms of a directional bias. So if it's a case the Fed doesn't pivot tomorrow, you will see a rejection from this. You will see the dollar ultimately get strength. You will see the indices sell off. And it's important to be aware of the underlying fundamentals as well. Same with the euro here as well. If it's a case that the Fed doesn't pivot tomorrow, we don't get that weakness that market participants, institutions are expecting, you're going to see dollar strength pick up. You're going to see dollar moving back into the upside and you're going to see the euro dollar sell off as well. So it's just being clear on, on the correlations within these markets as well. Next on the list is obviously gold. So gold um, rejected this order block level here on the one arrow. So you see, if you go back to the CPI data, we had consolidation, we had the break of structure, we flagged back up and uh, continued trending all the way into these lows at 1620, flagged beautifully back up into this order block level here on the one hour. And um, you can kind of see that there. And since then, last week, we sold off back into this local region. Now, the one hour selling or one hour uh, order block on the downside wasn't hit. This kind of area of liquidity um, was never uh, was never mitigated. So this is an unmitigated zone. And we can see now again, uh, gold rallying back into the upside. So I expect a lot of chop in gold over the next um, day or so, particularly as these markets develop. Now, if you're looking at this impulsive move, so very, very sharp impulsive move, flags back into the upside, and we see a very, very sharp decline. So you're seeing here declines. So if you're looking at selling, I would keep an eye on this region here, um, which is around about the 116.60. So you can see where there's the, the selling impulse. So this wave of selling um, initiate last week. And of course, it's around this region. Okay, Does that mean that we're not going to get a retest of 1674? That is also an option too. So these two levels of interest are ones that I'm focusing quite heavily into the FOMC tomorrow evening. Now, S&Ps moving across now to the, the indice play. Okay, So what have we seen over the last couple of weeks since, the, since that um, stop punt on the CPI data we've talked about for the last few weeks? That manipulation took the highs, flagged back down. And since then, the order flow is just churning higher. So liquidity providers, market makers still pushing these indices as high as possible. So you'll see that across the board. You'll see it on the NASDAQ. You'll see it on the Dow Jones in a moment. And you'll see it in the European counterparts. So again, of course, if this pivot doesn't come, that is probably going to be the catalyst for the end of this cycle of price action and for the next wave of selling to the downside. So if you're looking at the daily price action here, broader time frames is quite clear. You can see here very, very quickly, we have... Um, we have an order block here with a daily order block zone of interest around about 4065 on the daily time frame. You can see how we've made new structured lows. We've got the reversal on the daily and the price action is now in a corrective cycle. So a corrective short term cycle like we saw here between um, the middle of June and the end of August or middle of August. Um, we've seen that kind of uh, cycle now developing. And of course, middle of October, we're now into the early part of November. Can we see the markets continue pulling back? So that would be kind of the area of interest that we're looking at from a selling perspective is can the markets get back up into this daily order block? So we've got we've got a region up here at 4290. You've got another daily order block, which was mitigated. So we've obviously broken structure. We flagged back up. We've mitigated this one. However, this, in, this next uh, impulse directive move has yet to be cleared out from a liquidity perspective. So worth keeping an eye on that. So from that perspective, markets are trending higher, markets are flagging higher. So worth keeping an eye to see, are we going to get that impulse to continue moving to the upside? If so, then you could tend to see um, the price action on the indices, obviously still being a little bit more bullish and of course weaker indices. But you're looking for guidance, you're looking for information and you're looking for clarity because of course, at any moment in time, you can see these markets reverse. Okay, we had it here very very sharp reversal and we had it over here in august as well very very sharp reversal so you do have to be relevant of that as well okay um, and of course these moves are either driven off of cpi events 
or they're generally driven off of central bank meetings like the Fed interest rate. And of course, we have that tomorrow. So NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ structurally speaking, is quite interesting because, of course, we had that um, we had that kind of bearish trend from, I suppose, the summer, new, new low, pullback, new low, new lows again. And of course, then the CPI reversal, that hunt of liquidity was the bottom, took the lows, took the highs, flagged back down. And of course, since then, the markets has been trending higher. So at this point in time on the NASDAQ alone, I would like to see the NASDAQ continue to trend back into this region up here um, around 650, 650 to 700. Why? Um, because we've obviously mitigated this low. So this phase of bearish price action, this impulse to the upside has now been mitigated off of this week. You can see it comes down, tags the level, tries to break through the, the area. You can actually see it just about does. And of course, very, very sharp reversal back into this region. And of course, since then, markets has come back up to test. So if you're looking at Friday's price action, we've closed very, very strongly on Friday. We've opened up bearish on Sunday night into Monday. We've had that little bit of a, um, a sell-off. We've now recovered back into this one hour level again. So you can see here now, we're currently sitting at that one hour level. How does the markets react? And of course, if we do engulf, if we do take out this 575 level, we should be expecting a run of this 650, 687, which then means the market is trying to continue with this phase of bullish price action. Highs, lows, highs, mitigation of low and now we're looking to try and potentially go to new highs so that's why i've been looking at the higher time frames again for clarity of purpose okay because when you come up here to this 11 650 11 700 level what are we seeing we are currently testing those highs from the beginning of october it's one of the only indices of the five or six that hasn't broken those fifth sixth of october highs where the market has continued to elevate and continue to push on okay um so that perspective now really becomes the key Am I looking at selling here at 537? It's a bit of a decisional area. I would rather wait and see um, because, of course, at this moment in time, markets do look a little bit more up, um, on the upside today than they do, obviously, in terms of that bearish sentiment. So obviously down to you within your trading plan. OK, so this level here, as I said, so this area of interest uh, between, I suppose, 660 or 650 and 700 on the NASDAQ is going to be structurally key this week because, of course, if we break this 650, 700, the likelihood is you're going to continue extending 11, 9. You've got a, a very, very uh, faint four-hour area here uh, at 11, 9 um, as an area of interest. And, of course, um, you do also have this area up here at around about 12, 150. So, of course, that gives kind of three, 400-point extensions on the NASDAQ, those kind of two, 3% swings that we've talked about in previous videos that is a potential opportunity if it's a case we're taking out the liquidity as such. So similar again with the Dow Jones, massive impulse. So Dow Jones was obviously one of the worst performing ones on the way down. And as you can see, it's one of the best performing ones on the way up. So NASDAQ, for example, in comparison, if you compare the Dow Jones to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is actually new around here. Okay, so this is the 5th, 6th of October highs. Okay, on the NASDAQ, you can see that there very, very quickly. We're, we haven't even superseded that. Whereas on the Dow Jones, we have completely broken through and of course why is that why is the dow jones massively outperforming the nasdaq well the reason why is because of last week how many stock earnings did we have in the nasdaq that didn't live up to standard we had facebook meta have a 20 percent sell-off with amazon heavily selling off we had apple um recovering somewhat but microsoft and google alphabet didn't do that well so you can see how the dynamics are placed so all of these indices have different stock compositions in that and that's why it's important to be aware of that. And if you ever want to check the composition weightings over in certain indices, mm -hmm. you can go through that on slick charts as well, which breaks down the weighting of the different indices, what indices have what stocks in them, and what relevance weighting does that have accordingly. Okay. And of course, if you're in the communities, if you have any questions on that, feel do free, feel do feel free to ask on that as well. So Dow Jones at the moment is now kind of tracking this 33,000 level. You can actually kind of see it there. We've taken out the liquidity short term. And we've now mitigated this level here, right? We've mitigated this level around 33,000. But from my perspective, if you look at the broader Dow Jones movement, you'll see here, right? What happens? New low, pull back. We take out the liquidity, marginally breaking above it, okay? What happens? New low makes a short-term pullback. What happens? The wick high supersedes. So if you're looking at this wick, you're saying, well, this is kind of a, a, a resistance line that people will be selling from. Of course, what happens? Breaks through, triggers the stops rejects this order block level from over here. So this is where I trade the order blocks from. And you can see how that's rejected very, very cleanly. And markets is obviously sold off from there. Now, again, similar scenario, pullback, new low again. What happens? Markets makes a pullback again, takes out the liquidity here, 
takes out the liquidity over here. So you tend to see when the markets tend to retrace, they tend to go beyond the traditional support levels or below the below the traditional support levels or above the traditional resistance levels. So that's why it's important to look at the the price action, the liquidity, um, the stop hunting nature of how these markets actually develop, and then being able to put clarity on that as well. All right. So currently where we stand on Dow Jones is 33,000 on the daily. Um, and I suppose from my perspective now, it could be a case of can the price action continue to develop tomorrow? And can we see a run at this uh, 33,900, 34,000? Okay. Um, now, it would not be surprising to see the markets ultimately close above this today. And if so, having a run at this region up here, because effectively what that's saying is this was the impulse from August. This was the sell off from the middle of August all the way through into the middle of October. And the markets have very, very quickly unwound. And of course, what have we seen traditionally speaking? Markets makes a new low, high, new lower low, new lower high, pull back into this region. New lows, pull back, new lows, pull back. So it wouldn't be completely uh, impossible to see the markets ultimately try and create a new corrective structure. And of course, I don't trade trend lines. I don't use trend lines, but you can kind of see how that's kind of playing out. You can kind of see how, right, we don't quite touch it there. We touch it there. Um, we're coming up to touch it here now. But of course, we could very easily make a short term impulse, try and take out the liquidity. And of course, then what happens markets then will probably maybe top out from here after it's taken the stops and then we'll see the next wave lower so let's see how that plays out let's see how that dynamic works through the early parts of this week and of course tomorrow's fomc now dax very very quickly finishing off on europe um uh, dax has come all the way back up so we had this we talked about it last week we had the hunt we take the highs we come back into the four hour order block very very clear buying just complete and utter bullish trend new highs bit of a pullback new highs steady grind higher steady impulse to the upside and steady kind of grind higher all the way back into this four hour level here and of course what's happening we're trying to take out this liquidity now of course this is the order block area here um but for me now i would be kind of waiting for a double mitigation or something like that where we we break off from it we break structure create kind of a short-term lower an impulse to the downside flag back up wait for that secondary opportunity and then look for selling because that's where your timing comes into play because you often hear of so many guys, traders who say, well, we've got the right directional bias, but our timing is off. Your timing is off because you're probably getting in too early and that mitigates around that, removing the idea of getting in too early into the charts, knowing when you've structure and then being able to rationalize accordingly beyond that. So this area here, this liquidity high at 13563 on my chart here is worth keeping an eye out on. But of course, could we potentially break out this liquidity because we've seen it so often before and come for this region up here in 13.9. So this would be kind of the, the really valuable area that if we kind of decide to say, well, no, we're not going to hold this. We're going to take the liquidity. If we continue to churn higher into tomorrow, of course, then this would be the region that I would be looking at. This area up here, you've got the four hour level at 13.930. If I just remove the camera and make things a little bit more precise, you can kind of see it there. And of course, if you were to go to the daily charts, you can kind of see how the daily order block comes in at around about 13,840. So this region here, depending on the time frames that you use, if you're using shorter time frames, you're probably being a little bit more patient. However, if you're using the daily time frames and having wider stops, wider TPs, you're getting in a lot quicker. So it really just depends on you as the trader, what's within your trading plan. And of course, in the daily as well, testing and trying to break through this four hour level as well. So you can kind of see how that's developing, how that's playing out. Um, on these markets at this moment in time. So last but not least, then, as I said, is the FTSE. So FTSE has finally broken through that uh, fifth, sixth. So you can actually see how the FTSE in the UK is really outperforming the NASDAQ. Again, NASDAQ in the laggard over the last week or so off the weaker um, off the weaker earnings seasons report. Now, of course, daily price action, we've seen um, multiple highs up here between 7,600, 7,700. We've broken down. We've flagged all the way back up into this region consolidation. We've broke the initial structure. We've flagged back up, rejected this daily order block here um, very, very clearly. But of course, there was a four-hour rejection as well. If you see it on the four-hour, um, you can allude to it as well. So you've got that four-hour impulse flags all the way back up. And then we went into that deeper sell-off from the middle part of September right through to the middle part of October. So we had that month of selling we had the structure, we had the lows. Of course, we took the highs, we took the lows again, very, very sharp manipulated sell-off through this 6,800 support level. So remember what I said, price action can potentially break these through and then reverse very, very quickly. That's what happened. We Sharp impulse, you can see it there very, very quickly. If I go down to a one hour, you'll see it as well. Sharp impulse breaks back up, takes the short-term liquidity, flags back down to this region. And of course, since then, it's just a gradual assimilation 
gradual trend. This is the true accurate trend playing out now. It's flagged back up into this order block level at 7,100. Has broken through. There was a bit of a break and retest. And this morning, first of the month, pension funds, traditionally speaking, generally buy on the first of the month in the UK. And that has been the catalyst that pushed this higher. But of course, price action in the back end has seen a very, very bullish trend developing over the last number of weeks. And that's exactly what's played out here. So it's simple when you can break the price action down into that. Um, so from my perspective now, what are we looking at? Well, you're, you're now mitigating all of this bearish order flow that we saw through September, middle of September into the end of September. We're now kind of taking this out. So price action today has come up into this region. Could we potentially come up into 7280, 7300? Yes, that would be a logical area. That's kind of the, the average. Now we're kind of approaching halfway points. So if you look at, if we just look at the kind of the, the highs to the lows perspective there, um, we kind of see that, right? You're kind of seeing this as um, a kind of a 12% sell-off. And of course, since then, if you, drop that back to kind of where we currently are. So we're going to overload over that for, for a moment. You can kind of see that we're kind of sitting back in this kind of average price. So this kind of area here between kind of 7,100, 7,200 is effectively kind of the average sell-off degree for this sharp impulse that we had um, over the last obviously month or so. You can kind of see how that's playing out as well. All right. Um, so worth keeping an eye on that. I think patience and discipline. I think this is a bit of middle of no man's land as I would call it here now. I would rather see the markets come higher. Now, of course, on the daily price action, we do have an, a daily candle here around 72.50, which is, again, nice psychological level when you go across over previous weeks and months of price action. And of course, we do have this daily level up here at 7,400. Now, that would be, for me, would be a very, very interesting level. To see, can the markets get into this daily level at 7,400 or potentially this upper level up here at 74.63? And effectively, what's happening from then, like the Dow Jones, it's mitigating all of this parish price action. But whether it gets there or not before tomorrow is unlikely. But of course, it's not impossible that we see a Fed pivot tomorrow. We see that bullish price action continue. And then all of a sudden we see a sell off the week after next or potentially next week. So worth having clarity in the price action, as always, um, try to make things as simple as possible for yourself. And of course, then stick with the plan in the back end. So that's where we are, guys. We'll be back tomorrow for, uh, ladies and gents, we'll be back tomorrow for the FOMC. And of course, any questions between then and now, um, we will be picking the news, the data, and of course, information up in our public Discord as well community. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Trade safe. And we'll see you all tomorrow for the FOMC preview.